So in the past week, I've came out with a series of videos detailing all the mechanics and all the ins and outs of each different synergy type in Gotwick, and also one a bit more generically going through how synergy works with bows and why female specifically is what you're going to want to be running with bows. And in all those videos, I do sort of touch on lineup priorities in terms of commanders. But there was just so much to cover in all those videos. I thought I'd do uh, singular videos on each of the synergy types and go over where commanders stack up against each other and all the specifics and little intricacies when it comes to the decision making when picking between them. So I've made a tier list here. This first video, I'm going to do it about bows, as you can probably see from the title and the, the commander's picture. I've filtered out all the obviously useless ones when it comes to these. Like I, I could have listed I don't know, Garel just as a random example, but there's what's the point? It's just going to be a total waste of time. No one's ever going to run him with bows, so everything that could potentially be relevant, I've tried to put here. Maybe I've missed something, I'm not sure, but this is what I, I've came up with. So I think the best starting point is a bit of a follow-on from my why female is the, the synergy type to go with for Bo's video. And that will be Sonara and Jamie specifically. Because they just don't work with Bo's realistically. Sonara does not proc off Bowman attacks. She only procs off melee units, which is infantry, spearmen, and cavalry. That is not Bowman, even if they're on the front row, they do not count under this, so Sonara can't multi-proc Bowman, so therefore she is bottom tier by a mile. And Jamie, on the same note, he does proc, but there's just no form of healing for him. There is no bow-specific Drake, Enzo, or Lats. Arslan and Hector only give spear stats, so it's only drag and assist the skill as a source of healing for him, which just is not enough, so he's right at the bottom. And because of that, Dayron and Dana will also be bottom tier, because their entire functionality comes from working in tandem with their synergy types. Dana, you just won't get the weakness attack, so it's pointless. And Dayron, he'll just in no way be worth it if you can't stack the bleeds onto all lineups, which you can't do without Rhea or John, really, to make him scale harder. So he's just pointless when you're not going to be getting bow-specific stats whatsoever. So that's a pretty simple starting point. And with all these being at the bottom, on the opposite note, Layla will be top tier. Statistically, she won't bring much to your lineup at all. She, of course, has Cav Health and Defense and only 38% or something total attack. But her four-star ability will be the core synergy of everything you look to do when it comes to building up a female lineup and because you're bows you're going to be running mono unit at all times you're not going to be running split troops whatsoever so commander damage will be at maximum value so all of these additional procs will be bringing you so much damage on the same note as that uh, cersei and daenerys will also be top tier with her cersei specifically will be the the other core engine of the build with layla is obviously very premium these two but in terms of a tier list that that's where they belong Cersei will be the priority over Daenerys because wildfire in its functionality is just so ridiculous when paired with Layla the fact that it hits into all lines on your opponent just makes it so absurdly valuable and because of that she will synergize with Layla better than any other commander realistically just because she'll benefit more than anyone else from these additional active casts or she'll bring more damage through the additional active casts when compared to anything else but that is probably the most obvious part of this tier list everything in between gets a bit trickier and is probably where this will be relevant to most people interested in this topic and have wondered about how to set up because if you are watching this you probably don't have Dinesh, you probably don't have Cersei You've probably not even thought about running any of these four, or have these two, regardless. You probably have Layla, and then it's just 
how do you maximize your damage alongside her? So I guess at this point, I'll probably go alphabetically. Is this listed alphabetically? I think mostly, but these three are out of order for some reason. Not entirely sure why, but that's fine. So Annie will be A tier. Aria will also be A tier alongside her. These two will be two of the core total attack female commanders to pair alongside Layla. They both, of course, gain additional damage uh, alongside the active reprox. So Annie will deal extra damage on top of her active castings, and Arya will effectively do the same with her, her death market interaction, where her active damage will ramp up more and more throughout the fight. So these two very much have a place in female bow builds. There is also the topic of their weapons now as well. So these both will now interact with disarm effect. You can see here Daenerys is one of the ways female can apply disarms with her active abilities. Each use has an 80% chance to put the target under the disarm status for how many seconds this scales up with her weapon now. But she is one of the ways female can apply disarms. If you see here with Annie, she can reproc her active off disarms and Arya will have a re effect on the the damage you deal as well. So for the higher budget female builds, Arya and Annie are now actually gaining value. And whilst they're still very much in A tier and not above that, they really have a core place in bow builds, both at the mid spender and probably the, the more whalier pay brackets at this point also. Baelish is a bit of an awkward one to place because... You of course can't proc him early because he procs off weakness attacks, which you can't do with bows at all because you have no healing sources. But he will proc at 25 seconds regardless, so you'll probably hit two active castings realistically at like 31 and 40 seconds. And through that, against bow mirrors, against other female builds, against weakness builds, this will get a decent bit of value. So he probably is a... A tier commander even devoid of synergy because he doesn't have anti-synergy and you can still get decent value through that. He does also have uh, okay statistics in terms of what he'll bring. Uh, where is he? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, here. So he's like 56.4% all stats and stats like that for bow commanders is actually pretty decent it's hard to find huge stat bringers for bows like for the melee units you have stuff like lats and andrea that will be bringing in, in the 70 80 90 percent of all stats and bows just really does not have that of any of these options at all i think the closest you'll get is mel with 84 percent bow attack but then she doesn't have bow health or anything alongside her Theon is also decent in terms of the stats he brings, but it just isn't at the levels of those other unit types. So his stats are actually pretty decent, given that. And then Egbert, this is actually a, a pretty important one to talk about, because I see him getting ran a lot in lower spending bow builds. I actually think he is terrible. When he gets awakened, which at the time of recording... He is not. He will gain value, but right now, all he's bringing is this 50% bow attack, which is, I assume, why people run him. The problem is, because he's unawakened, you're getting 10k less army size compared to a rank 10 commander, which is a lot of lost troops. Plus, you're losing a lot of commander damage, because zero star commanders, which he in effect is, will cast their actives two times for a fight. Even aside from the lower damage on its scaling, which is also important, he'll just cast it two times less than a four-star commander. Plus, he's male, so he won't reproc off Layla. But even past that, stuff like uh, Strong Assault on the Dragon or Follow-Up, which you're going to be want to be getting for decent mid-spending bow builds, he'll lose value through just not casting his active enough times to, to get decent value out of this. So I really don't think he is a very good option at all for, for several reasons, especially given the, the alternatives. Like even at his level of accessibility, there are just better alternatives like Sheila and 
sensor and stuff like that. I mean, I think a good comparison here is Obeying. I I could put Obeying in a tier above just to prove a point, but in a in a vacuum, Obeying will be better than Egbert. E even if you look at the stats, Obeying at Max Awakening will only bring 48% bow attack and nothing else. He is like an economy commander. He's not actually a, a PvP commander realistically. But because you can four-star him... Ah, uh, where even is he? I'm so low awakened here. Because you can awaken him, you'll have more army size. Even here at, at two-star, he has 10k more army size. But then you can get more active castings. You can scale the active damage further. And even though his stats, even at four-star, will be lower than unawakened Egbert, something like Obeyne will still be better than him. So I'd really try and avoid running Egbert wherever possible, honestly. John, again, it's, it's kind of similar to the, to the things I've said about Baelish. Not entirely. He has good stats. I think he, it's the same stats as, as Peter, right? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, 56.4% all totals. The issue with John, if I can find him, is for bows, he won't let them crit. This allied infantry and non-front row troop does not include bows when you actually test it in practice. He only affects melee units. You will, however, still get the damage reduction, though, which is fairly valuable, honestly. I haven't actually done the maths on this, but when you consider the uptime, this will be, what, like 6-7%? flat damage, damage reduction across a fight or something. It only affects normal attack, so it isn't that simple because that won't account for movement in the first few seconds of the fight and whatnot, but there will be, be value tied to this. Perhaps I'm overrating him, putting him A, actually. I think he, he probably belongs in B because of that. Because he, he's basically just a stat follower with no synergy at all. So I think B is probably where, where he belongs. But then the question is... Will he actually perform worse than something like Arya? Because he will bring so many passive stats over her. That's that's the difficult part. I mean, a, a four-star Arya weapon Arya, he, he definitely would. So uh, I, I guess I'll approach it like that. Kevin, he sort of gets screwed by the fact that Sonara doesn't work with bows. If Sonara did work with bows, he'd actually be very, very good. The only additional normal attacks he can get is from Kravras, which just isn't enough to make use of him at all. If you saw in my Why Female is the Best Synergy for Bows video, the maths I showed on that, a 4-star Sonara weapon will bring 10 times more extra normal attacks than a base 4-star Kravras will. So whilst you will still get some procs, because he doesn't proc only off extra normal attacks, it is just normal attacks. He will have the half proc rate compared to melee units, and you just don't have a route into multi-proccing normal attacks enough to really scale it up as much as you need to. And he's male, so he doesn't synergize with the core of the build you're going to want to be going for, which really loses out value on him. If he was female, he honestly might be fairly usable. He could maybe go like B or A. But because he's male, he just doesn't really have a place. So it's for sure one of the lower tiers for him because of that. Kravras, however, is very, very good. If you, again, saw my previous video, the maths on how good his four star is, is honestly probably one of the best four stars in the game definitely the best four star for any of the elite token commanders for sure it just well it's literally like a 20 percent damage increase which is just absurd the only issue is he's of course male which goes against your synergy type but he is realistically good enough in mid spender builds to overcome that just because he will bring good bow attack and his four star is just so, so good, you can sort of forgive the extra few active reprocs. And he, it's not like he silences himself or anything like that. He will still use four actives in a fight. So you can use that through to use follow-up and 
uh, strong assault and stuff like that, and he will do good commander damage through that, because you're going to be mono bow anyway. So it's not the end of the world, realistically. Marjorie is basically what I've said about Arya and Annie. Marjorie does have the issue, though, of just being awkward in how she procs. She only hits male commanders, and that's difficult because she doesn't work against female at all. She can't disarm weakness when they're weakness attacking because that doesn't count as normal attacks, and she can't disarm uh, bleeds, primary enablers, and Sonara and Rhea because they're female. So while she is good, she's just situational and awkward because of that. When you do get value out of her, though, she is great. So I do think she belongs up in one of these better tiers, especially given the the synergy she has with Annie and Arya with their weapons now. And she will be the easiest route into synergizing with them, because realistically, getting these two is very difficult. I'm pretty sure Cersei doesn't actually even count as a disarm effect. Uh, her tooltip doesn't indicate as such, at least. It's just a miss effect. So it would just be Danny and Marge. Not entirely sure about that, honestly. But something like a Layla, Annie, Arya, Marge, Kravras build, or Layla, Annie, Arya, Marge, uh, Melisandre, or something like that. I guess I can put Melisandre in now. Uh, it's probably the sort of thing you're going to want to be going for as a mid spender bow player, especially if you get uh, the weapons on these two and can get the synergy through Marjorie. Mel is probably one of the more simple ones to talk about. She gives the best bow stats out of any of these with her 84% bow attack, plus her 4 star is very good for bow builds. It's a 50% chance to deal 10% additional damage, so that's basically 5% increased bowman normal attack damage in effect, which is really solid. Plus she's of course female, so she can benefit from the the multi-proc active castings from Layla, and then you can potentially snowball that into wildfire procs and get all the good stuff out of the, the female synergy through that. Night King is sort of awkward for this, honestly. In a vacuum, he is amazing. Like, of, of course he is. He's Night King. I think most people would assume he belongs up here, and in live pvp situations where his casualty rate increase gets value he probably is like if we look at the night king stats here his stats are ridiculous with the reduction the total attack but you do want this casualty rate getting value the issue night king has if we look at him uh he doesn't have an active cast he has this weird like dragon attack thing and this can't be multi-procced by Layla and it doesn't proc wildfire so he in effect is anti-synergy with the female build and because of that I don't think he can actually be an S tier commander for for bows if he's in like live pvp and you're rallying someone's castle he will probably of course be in your top five commanders in your formation so maybe I should move him up to here just to sort of indicate that but he is awkward and it, it really isn't as simple as a decision as using him in in weakness and bleed specifically is because he just does have anti-synergy with with the female build solma again is is a very awkward one to to write i honestly want to put her in b tier but i i just feel like a a Salma hater in doing that because I do know she's very popular. This is she'll she'll only bring the forty percent total health, so her stats are near enough uh, non-existent. There there is a bit there of course, but it's it's basically nothing. She's not bringing any attack, which is your main priority as bows. So everything she's bringing for you is tied up in her four star ability, and as I feel like I say in every video at this point. This doesn't give you additional active casts on four-star commanders, except Daenerys. So realistically, using Salma is only going to decrease your damage output as bows. The issue is, if you have 
Cersei specifically getting the snowballed actives will like hugely benefit you in a fight because you if you can kill tons of stuff at one second you'll then fight into so much fewer troops that they'll kill you less and then you can retain your troops to normal attack at higher numbers for a longer period of time and that would just give you an advantage so i feel like with without these premium commanders in play she's probably a b tier with them in play she's probably like a tier so like there or something but even then i i'd at least test it because i just don't think she's good i feel like such a salma hater but the way she works with that four star it just isn't good you'll only get damage snowball from it because if you use her say you run her in like this build your annie Okay, so your Annie will cast at one second, and let's say it multiprocs like two times, so you hit three actives at one second, and that let's say it does 100k troop damage. The only benefit you're actually getting from that 100k damage is the fact that those 100k troops are out of the fight for the next 39 seconds, because they would die at... 40 seconds regardless so it's sort of like a reroute effect indirectly i mean it isn't at all but you can sort of envision it as like as that in terms of what it does the issue is would that indirect reroute effect actually help you more in the fight than just say running like melisandre with 84 percent bow attack maybe it does but i don't i don't think it would I don't have any of this stuff to like test out on a day-to-day -day basis, but just when I think it through, I don't see how gaining no damage but dealing the damage earlier would benefit you more than having 84% bow attack to scale into all your normal attacks, all your wildfire damage, all your reprocked active castings with mono formations, so you're doing maximum commander damage. It just, I, I just can't see it. It makes no sense to me. So, I think Salma sucks, basically. <laughs> and yeah, I, I'm definitely going to rank her below uh, these ones in, in the mid-spender bracket, for sure. Then it's Sandor. Uh, in terms of these, like, off-synergy F5 commanders, I've actually put them, like, fairly high so far. But Sandor will go C tier. He, he should maybe go even lower than that, but I'm keeping him there because of his passive stats. The issue with Sandor is he has anti-synergy with the build because he silences himself and a random ally. So he probably should go lower, but you could run him with like a weird Kravras, Kevin, like Melisandre, like normal attack build, I guess. I have no idea why you'd ever do that. But yeah, he, he isn't good and you shouldn't be running him even if you have him. It's just not worth shoehorning him in whatsoever. Seg is very basic. He's just a pure stat funneler with no synergy whatsoever. Given what I've said about Salma, I'm sort of debating putting him in the same tier. Or maybe dragging Salma down, but I'm going to put him here. He's just like 40% totals. And that's it. It's okay, but... It's not good in any way, shape, or form. Like, you're running mono formations, so the fact they're total is basically irrelevant. So it's basically just 40% all bow stats with no synergy, which is fine. But you're going to have better options, and you shouldn't really be running him at all. And then Sunel. Sunel's really awkward because she only brings cav stats. It's like cav anti counter, cav attack, cav health. It's all irrelevant to you really. And total defense. If that was total attack, that would be really useful. All you're gonna be getting from Sunel with a bow build will be this four star ability. And admittedly, this four star ability is very, very good. Because it affects all female commanders. So in a vacuum, she'd be like C or D tier. But if you pair her with like a formation like this, where it's full whale female and you're snowballing the actives immediately, she would be S tier and Salma would, would definitely be above B tier as well. 
I find it awkward ranking her because of that, but I'll, I'll put her in A for the, the sake of the tier list. But it is weird, because if you get her, you're probably going to have Cersei and Daenerys as is, and then she will be really, really good. Because she will scale up your commander damage so much. But there is opportunity cost with it, of course, because you are, again, losing so many stats. Again, like what I said with Selma, you'll get more commander damage of her, yes. But again, you could potentially have something like Melisandre as the swap, where you're, you're gaining 84% bow attack. And especially with how bows have such high base attack, as is, let alone like base attack on weapons, attack stats on bows will scale further than the other unit types because of that. Uh, her not having any attack stats at all is a is a problem. So so maybe a in all scenarios is probably the best place to keep her. Honestly, Sheila, Sansa, these two serve very similar functions. They're just female bow stat givers. Really, they both have a sixty six percent bow attack. Sansa though does have the bow health too. Her buffs read a bit weirdly because it's passive bow attack. I guess it's a bit higher than 66% actually. So Sansa will be preferable here. And probably a higher priority upgrade than Sheila, especially because of the passive stats. But I think they're both B tier. That They're not going to be better than the stuff with real synergy or better stat givers like Mel. Theon again is slightly awkward. I think he's B tier just because he doesn't have synergy with the build you're running. You have to run female realistically, and he gives nothing for that, obviously. His stats are really, really good. With his total attack on top of the bow attack, you will be getting over 80% attack from running him, plus the defensive stats. But in, in offensive situations, at least, you're not going to be getting anything out of him at all. If you're defending with like 18 mil troops, he will, he'll gain value there for sure. But in stuff like AC rallying or solo attacking in GB and whatnot, I, I don't think you can put him higher than here realistically. And then Robert is terrible. He only gives uh, bow defense. So he's basically useless. He's male, so he doesn't synergize with anything. And why would anyone upgrade Robert in any capacity? It's just a sad reality of it. And yeah, I think this is pretty much how I, I tier the commanders for female. The best whale formation in terms of just raw damage output is probably this. Or again, Salma could be debated as a cut, especially if you have one of these with their four-star weapons. And if it's real world combat or GB or something where casualty rate gets value. Night King is probably up there. Mid spender builds are more uh, difficult of course because there, there's just more options in that bracket. I do think Salma has no place in mid spender bow builds. Layla is a necessity. And then I think it has to be four of these five realistically. What would be best out of the five of them is probably fairly dependent on different factors, like what weapons you have and whatnot. But I, I'd lean towards Marge probably being the cut for very low spending players, because one, she's harder to get, and two, you won't be able to have the weapons on these two for her to get good value. And she's just so situational. If you do have her and you do have the weapons on these two, it probably will be ideal to run her. And then I guess you have to choose between one of these two. And I'd probably advise testing between them rather than me just giving an answer because they're probably very close in value and it's hard to envision uh, how much the additional chance at active reprocs from Layla will actually influence things. Just do not sleep on Kravras's four star because it is so ridiculous even if he doesn't synergize with Layla at all. If you're pure free-to-play, you don't really have any options, realistically. You're going to have to run Arya. You're going to have to run Sheila. You're going to have to run Kravras. 
and then I guess Sansa, and then probably Obain, however disgusting that is to say, above Egbert because of the awakening damage. If you can get at least one uh, epic token commander to gold and four star though, make sure it's Layla, and then do Layla, Arya, Sheila, Sansa, and Kravras. That is probably how I'd set bows up in all scenarios.